gents, I'm here with Justin Jeffers from Fang Young Gent and from Jay Butler Loafers. And I wanted to talk a little bit about something I saw on Instagram. I saw an ad from Taylor Stitch, uh -huh. which called, uh, they said their boots are being made in the footwear capital of the world, yeah. which is Leon, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And you, as a person who makes shoes in Leon, Mexico, has visited and has explored that whole space. I'd love to kind of start with how it became that way and then talk a little bit about what it's like today yeah. and, and why that is the case. Yeah, um, well, John, first, thanks for having me here. It's great to be on the Cavalier, gentlemen. Nice to meet all of you. Uh, my name is Justin Jeffers again. Uh, so I actually also, before I got into shoes and into leatherworking and before I started Jay Butler, I had no clue that Leon, I, well, A, I didn't know what Leon was. I didn't know that there was a city in Mexico called Leon. Unfortunately, all we hear about Mexico and the United States is cartels, crime, illegal immigration, and spring break. And taking our jobs. And Taco Tuesday. Taco yes. Tuesday. <laughs> and Corona. Um, and so when I started the process of uh, learning how shoes are made, where they're made, I went to a trade show and came across Leon. Um, and that kind of took me down the rabbit hole of what is Leon Mexico, which it, it really is a shoe production capital of the world. Is it like the capital? I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but there's a ton of production down there, and there's a lot of really good production down there. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, how it started was back in like the 1600s, um, as Lyon was, uh, you know, being built into what was then a city, you know, basically a village. There was a lot of agriculture and cattle farming going on there, and with cattle farming uh, comes leatherworking, and so the leather craft trade and shoes and other leather goods, uh, probably saddles, for instance. Uh, came about sometime in the 1600s. From there, uh, it really has just grown into the main industry in that city and in the region surrounding Lyon. Lyon is a city of about two million people. Um, you know, it, it's an elevated uh, kind of area, like Denver almost. Um, but when you think of what it is industrially, it's almost like Detroit for cars, but it's that for shoes in Mexico. Um, they raise some of the cattle, uh, although that said, most of the hides in Lyon come from the United States as a byproduct of our food industry. Um, the leather tanning is down there, they make the shoe boxes, the bits uh, on our bit loafers, the buckles on the belts, um, you know, they make the actual shoes, a lot of the thread that's made to stitch the shoes together is down there. Um, they don't really make the machines that do some of the work, but everything else, or most of it is made down there, which is actually really cool. So in the span of a couple of hours, I can go see my entire supply chain down there, um, which is which is really cool. And that's part of why we're seeing a lot of small brands like Taylor Stitch, Tacovas, Thursday Boot, Jay Butler. Um, Saddleback. Yeah, Saddleback. Yeah, there. Saddleback, uh, Independence Brothers is yeah. another jacket that I just got. Like, there's a lot of manufacturing being done down there. Yeah, there, there's a ton down there. Um, and the, for good reason. And the, the people who work in the factories and the workshops some of them, this is this is their livelihood, uh, but it's more than that. This is the culture of Lyon and the culture of the region, which is really cool. Um, there have been some factories, and even the one that I work with, you'll see uh, a nephew and an uncle, or a father and a son, you know, working side by side, a brother and sister. And to me, that's really cool. It's a family thing, and they take a ton of pride in what they do. It's not, you know, I mean, yes, it, it's a job, but for a lot of them, you can tell it's more than just a job. And I saw that soon after I got down there. Uh, and within the first couple factory visits I did, I was like, this is the place. Mm -hmm. you know, they, well, and I especially heard that from Alan Edmonds. Yes. Yeah. They were telling me that like in their local high school, they used to be able to get like 70% of students interested mm -hmm. in some sort of trade. And today it's like 10 or 15% that they can even get interested yeah. in working in their shop. And you don't see people going into the craft, especially yeah. here. And so, but, but we've also seen a lot of, I mean, a lot of our manufacturing is done in China. Mm -hmm. And now it's moving kind of down Southern into Asia as they yeah. chase cheaper factories. Vietnam, Bangladesh, India sometimes. Right. And, but, yeah. but it seems Seems like Leon is kind of like positioned itself uniquely from there, especially because there's not as much like lead time when you yeah. have to ship things because they have to come over in cargo ships and that sort of thing. Yeah. I feel it's like it's they've made a, a name for themselves. It's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah, all, all good points. The lead time was a big thing for me, um, and since the factories are not quite as big as the factories you'll see in China, India. Like I was just in India visiting bedding factories, and one of the complex I visited was hundreds of acres. Um, they're making thousands of bedding sets. I know bedding is different than shoes, but the scale at which they operate there, I've never seen a factory or a complex that big down in Mexico. Um, the lead times are, are excellent. Um, you cut that month on water, you, you cut that out. There's still time you know, to ship over land, uh, but it's easier than shipping over water. Uh, and there's also less of a cultural difference. Time zone, language, all that stuff is, is nice. And you know, I also like the idea of supporting our neighbors too. 
um, and I enjoy my time out there. The food is great, the people are nice, they're super hospitable, um, they're super respectful. Um, I've never had uh, you know, a shady interaction, although one time, one place I visited, they did steal power from the power grid. Uh, <laughs> they're out of business now, though. <laughs> they catch us up to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there are definitely some some benefits, uh, and with, with the smaller factories come smaller minimum order quantities, which for brands like myself and some of the other ones I mentioned, that's a huge differentiator, and that um, helps out a lot. Now, it, yes, it's a little more expensive than going to Asia or India, Bangladesh, Vietnam, um, and even now we're seeing some stuff in Africa. Um, it's it's definitely more expensive, um, but for my business, the way I want to run my business, and the way that I'm strategizing the business, it makes the most sense. Do you think there's a level, like a, a maximum level of finish and polish that can be done in Leon? Because we see a lot of DTC brands are made in Spain or they're made in, in Portugal and, and like in Europe and yeah. it's, they come out like very fine. Yeah. But I feel like there's a, a almost like a max limit that I've seen come out of Mexico to a degree. Yeah, uh, interesting question. And the main reason for that isn't uh, actually the finishing of the shoe, it's the actual leather itself. Um, Europe produces the best casket in the world. Um, the way that the uh, agriculture industry uh, is focused, and there's a different type of focus on raising calf in Europe than there is in the United States and in Mexico. So they have access to a lot more, or a greater quantity of caskins. And the focus isn't necessarily on making the cows as big as possible, as soon as possible, like we have in the US in our industrial you know, farming. Um, they pay more attention to developing a really nice, supple, stretch mark free skin. Um, so in, in Lyon, um, you can find calf skin, you either have to import it um, or you find it, but it's oftentimes not as good of a quality. Um, and so that's, that's part of the finish or the, or the shine. And the other part of it is a lot of the shoemaking in Lyon uh, goes back to Western boot making. So there's a ton of tremendous Goodyear welted, uh, a tremendous amount of Goodyear welted shoes being made down there, like Thursday boot. Um, you know, I even looked into it for Jay Butler. Um, they're phenomenal craftsmen on the Goodyear welted front. Uh, they can do the hand, I mean, they, they can really do it all. Um, what holds them behind on the dress shoe front is they're not used to that aesthetic, that American, Italian, Spanish, French, English kind of aesthetic. And so that's really what holds them back. Um, so uh, it's, it's part of the finish, but it's also part of what they're used to. You know, Western boots don't have the high shine that we're used to seeing on a pair of Meermans or Crockett and Jones or um, you know, Scarpa di Bianco's, stuff like that. Could you do it down there? Yeah, if, if you imported the leather, by all means go for it. But at that point, you might as well just produce in Spain or Portugal or Italy because any of the cost savings on labor are going to be overtaken by the importing costs and fees for the leather. I looked into it, so. <laughs> it's, it was. Uh, I wish it was different, but that's what it is. Okay, so for a person who's never been to Leon, like, yeah. what is it like when you get down there and you're trying to figure out, like, find your way around? Mm -hmm. uh, so first time I got down there, um, I had gone to Magic, which is a massive trade show, sourcing trade show in Las Vegas, and uh, there were a couple booths from Mexico, a trade association, and they're like, oh, you know, come to Mexico, we have great footwear production, and I was like, oh, I don't know about that, and then I looked into it, and I was like. Okay, now I know about that. Let's go to Mexico. So I get to Mexico and I arrive on like a, you know, a Saturday night and there's this big trade show in Lyon, uh, you know, for shoes and leather goods and leather. And you know, I walk around kind of the market area and I look at all the shoes and I was like, these shoes are not great. But what I saw, I mean, they weren't. Like the style was off, you know, the leather itself was, was crap. But what I saw was glimmers of hope um, from a production standpoint because they were making hand sewn moccasins, you know, they can make sneakers, they can make boots. I saw it all there. It just needed to be tweaked to my, to the aesthetic that I wanted for my brand, Jay Butler. Um, so, you know, what I have learned since being down there is, uh, you know, Mexico in reality is a lot different kind of what I said a few minutes ago. A lot different than what we're told it's like. Leon is a, a, you know, a traditional uh, area in Mexico. It's industrial and it's relatively well to do. Um, it's not, you know, ridden with crime. It's, uh, you know, the people are jovial, they're respectful, they're kind, um, and that was very apparent to me very quickly. Um, it's really kind of cool for me as someone who loves leather and shoes and footwear manufacturing. You'll be walking or driving down a block, and you'll see like two random shoe factories in a row, or you'll be driving past someone's living room, and you'll see people in there, you know, doing the hand sewing, or they'll be in there, you know, stitching the soles, or they'll be drafting the patterns. That's like, to me, that's really cool. 
Um, and, and so there's everything from a super small mom and pop workshop to massive, you know, hundred or thousand person factories there. Um, the city, you know, in, in some respects is not uh, terribly dissimilar to some of the cities here in the United States. You know, there's blocks, there's commercial, there's residential, there's towers, there's low rise buildings, there's, you know, there's everything. Um, the architecture is obviously a bit different. There are you in parts of Lyon and in other parts around Lyon, you have a very strong Spanish colonial influence, which to me is really cool. You can go to like Guanajuato, which is 45 minutes away, or Carretero, or San Miguel de Lende, and these are like UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and you, you know, you feel like you're almost in Spain, these beautiful cobblestone streets, these, you know, little villas, um, so that's really cool, and I, I do quite enjoy that. Um, but for me, it's, it's really been kind of a cultural ex exploration. Um, this is, Leon is not a touristy part of Mexico. Um, it is a, a, you know, it is a, a working town, um, and my experience there has very much been that. Um, but they have, they have great food, they have museums, they have a distinct cultural heritage, you know, to Leon. I've even been to the Leon Fair. Um, which was very cool. They had you know, chicken fighting and Ferris wheels and video games and all this stuff. How often do you end up down there? Uh, for me, I go between two and like five times a year. Mm -hmm. It just kind of depends on what's going on with the business, the production cycles, um, you know, or if I just kind of want to go down and, and check in with my contacts and, and see what's going on. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in having FaceTime with my supply chain and with my partners. Um, and I think they appreciate it as well. And for anyone who's worked in supply chain and who's worked in manufacturing and really any business, um, you know, when you were in consulting, talking to someone on the phone and talking to someone on email and then being there in person like this is, you get so much more done. And it's a, a much better way to build a relationship, I think. Um, so any chance I get in the time that I have, I, I enjoy going down there. So that was, I mean, I wanted to hear a lot about that. You know, I get some anecdotes from different companies that I work with on what it's like to really manufacture, but uh, it does seem like, you know, footwear capital of the world, maybe they can start actually there promoting this. a lot of shoes down there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, thanks for sharing, Justin. You can check out Jay Butler uh, on his site. I've done reviews on his stuff before, and I think it is some of the best stuff. It's like, you know, $200. It's really tough to beat those loafers Thank at you. that price because uh, I've tried most of them at this point. I, I would say you're 100% right, but I'm obviously very biased. Yeah. <laughs> so if you check out Jay Butler and also find Young Jen, we'll link to all this stuff below. And thanks for sharing. Thanks for having me.